Orange County Public Schools. I have approximately 14 minutes to um, discuss or go over how to upload your goals each game. This information, this presentation is also loaded in Teachscape, and I will show you how to get there. Um, there are two documents at the back of the room. One is an orange paper. It is Teachscape Learn Guidance. So this will help you to access Teachscape Learn, and at the bottom, back page, is my contact information. There is also another help in reference to student learning objectives and circumstances for those, which is very important for you to have and take back to your school. So please pick up both of these documents. Very quickly, for student, um, for your goals this year, you're required to enter two professional practice goals. Two professional practice goals. Your goals should be based on your self-assessment that you completed last year. So the self-assessment is a reflection of your practice. From that, you would have developed two professional practice goals around two of the eight components. So first, what you want to do is log into Teachscape and access Reflect. Once you get to Reflect, you will see your evaluation plan. Your evaluation plan consists of multiple activities. All teachers, first year, non-tenured, and tenured, must complete goal setting. As, as a matter of fact, all employees. Those teachers who are using the framework for teaching evaluation process are responsible for student learning objectives. Those teachers are being evaluated using the standards for excellence evaluation process are not held accountable for student growth. The lines and dots mean that it's 
a form. And the form will populate right here in TeamScape. You don't have to go and get the form, download the form, build it out, and scan it for yourself. It will populate here. The second task is delineated by a piece of paper with a folded corner. If you see an icon with a folded corner, it means it's an artifact, meaning it's something you have to upload or attach to TeamScape. And then the third task will see has more lines and dots and that's a form. Now be mindful that each of these tasks are delineated by an owner. Meaning if you are not the owner of the task, don't touch it. You don't have access to it. Same difference with administrators. They do not have access at this particular time to your form or artifact unless you give it to them. Does that make sense? So, let's be clear. For new teachers, first year teachers in Prince George's County, their goal and only goal is to learn the framework for teaching. They have no professional practice experience. So therefore, they are to learn the framework. It's already populated here for them. All they have to do is agree and type their name. Now, for those of us who have been in the system, so non-tenured and tenured teachers, we also have the task for a form, meaning we can complete the form there. But the majority of us completed our self-assessment and goal-setting documents prior to leaving for summer break last year, correct? Now, what if you lost it? What if your computer died? Or what if you lost your drive? Right? And that happens, yes? yes? So that's why we put the form here. So that way, if you did lose those documents from last year, all you have to do, you can now retype your goals. But if you have your documents saved from May or June of last year, you do not complete the first task. You do not have to fill out the form. All we need you to do is to upload your artifact in the second task. So this is what it looks like for a brand new teacher. As you can see, the goal is completed. I will learn FFT, I will attend professional development, whatever, agree, 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 and sign their name. For the rest of us, if we have our documents, you will click start on that tab, and this is what you will see. Upload artifact means to attach, right? So, and I just want you to know because some of our administrators didn't know that. So upload means to attach the document. So when you click on upload, your document finder will automatically pop up. So you will search for your goal setting document number one and click open. And as you can see, it will populate there. Do not click submit in between uploads. Think about attaching documents to your email. You won't click send unless you've uploaded or attached all the documents, correct? So all you have to do, please, do not click submit in between uploads. It will allow you to continuously upload documents, but once you click submit, it immediately goes to the administrator for review. So if you accidentally click submit and have only uploaded or attached one of your goals, please just call your administrator and ask them to request revisions or email me. And I will, I will send that information to your administrator. So again, once you click submit, after uploading both of your goals, you are complete with this activity. For brand new teachers and brand new teachers only, first year teachers, they are required to type their name because they are submitting a form. The 
The rest of us do not have to type our name when we submit our goal setting documents because we're the owners of those documents. So once it's sent to the administrators, they cannot change the documents or manipulate the documents. We are the owners. So they will then complete a principal approval form. And once they complete that form, when they click submit, the information will be sent back to you. And that is the goal setting process. It is the exact same for student learning objectives. For student learning objectives, and I do apologize because I'm going to go live. But for student learning objectives, when you click on that activity, you will see at least six different tasks. The first task is delineated by the icon of the bolded corner, and that's the artifact. You will now attach or upload that SLO1 the document, the five-piece document. For task number two, it is a form, and the form is asking for your objective, copy and paste your academic goal, and then for the number of students in your target group. 10, 12, 20, 130, whatever the number is, you're requesting that number. Do not worry about your adjusted target number, and do not worry about your actual target number. All of that will come in February of 2015. Right now, we just want to know how many students are in your SLO group. That is it. Um, again, this piece of paper, um, where it has memorandum, all principles employed performance, William Ryan, is specific to student learning objectives and um, revisions to your objectives. Speaking to student withdrawal, student attendance, and the start date of teachers after September 30th. If you have any questions, again, my name is Bridget Blaney. It's at the back of this orange document. I will be in the hall um, until 5.30 this afternoon. Um, so if you have individual questions, I'll take your questions there. But please um, email me at your very earliest convenience. Um, all, okay. So last year we understand that there were implementation issues across the board with this evaluation process. Most specifically student learning objectives. Um, and it, it was, there was a lot going on towards the end of the year. Um, this year by way of executive leadership, um, PARC will begin, um, beginning March 1st through April 30th of 2015. Um, at that point, we were instructed and told that uh, information from any office or evaluation will not be occurring in any of the school buildings between that time. Meaning all evaluation activities had to be completed prior to March 1st of 2015. Therefore, this year we have to try the first semester SLO instructional interval because we can't have you worried about student learning objectives and anything else but part beginning March 1st of 2015. So this year we are attempting um, for the first semester only, meaning all of the pre-assessments are focused for instruction from September through January 23rd, 2014. So therefore, your instructional intervals can be first quarter, second quarter, first semester, or a unit within that time interval. But, so although the instruction per se ends January 23rd, you will have through February 27th, to give and analyze your post-assessment and then begin entering your final data in TeamScape. Um, this is my time here. Again, I will be in the hall if you have any questions. Thank you.
And frankly, when you look at the president's job approval, which is usually a good kind of barometer of how well the president's party will do, we're actually worse than where we were four years ago. Next slide. And whereas more, more than anything else, the question that I care about, you know, when we talk to voters, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, is that how interested are you in this race? And we saw in 2006, uh, you know, just as a point of comparison, that when Democrats are excited, when they're enthused, there's more of us, number one, and we win. In 2010, it was the Republicans, and they won. And looking at where we are in 2014, it seems to be again a repeat of 2010. Republicans are just more engaged, more enthused, they're more, you know, they're the intensity level among those voters are just so much higher than among Democrats. Next slide. So what about here in Maryland? Next slide. <laughs> what we have realized in our polling and what some of you have seen when you talk to voters and volunteers, your neighbors, is that we have a few kind of fundamental challenges when it comes to this, this race. The first thing is that despite a series of tough votes and kind of going through this recession over the last few years, the governor's job approval rating um, is high among Democrats, but about split among all voters. Next slide. And perhaps even more important, in every election we say, you know, do, we, do you want to change? Do you want to kind of stick with where things are going right now? And frankly, more Maryland voters, even Democrats, want to change. And the candidate for change, unfortunately, is not Anthony Brown. Uh, we are the candidate of O'Malley Brown, the candidate who's been lieutenant governor for the last eight years. And so therefore, we're fighting an uphill battle. Next slide. And what you see, if you see the press releases and the news stories, is that yes, um, Anthony Brown is ahead. You know, in some polls, the margins are bigger, some polls, the margins are smaller. But when you look at this, these are just two polls in the summer. What I see is that Anthony Brown, who's incredibly well known, has high name ID, is at below 50%. And when you're essentially an incumbent person running for office and you're below 50, that's a point of concern for us. And that's essentially what we're going after. People don't know who Larry Hogan is, don't know his record, but yet they're still saying that they're going to vote for him. Next slide. And so our, really our challenge for us is that given that Larry Hogan is undecided, you see that that's the orange column, the yellow column on, on the right, people don't know who Larry Hogan is, but they still want to vote for him. He's undefined and unknown. And frankly, you know, very similar to how Rudy Giuliani said, you know, a noun of verb in 9-11, for Larry Hogan, it's a noun of verb in 40 tax increases. And that's essentially the only thing that he wants to talk about, because that's an issue that favors him. Our challenge is to do something different. Next slide. And the one thing I tell people when I give this presentation, especially in places like Prince George's County, or Baltimore City, or Montgomery, is that yes, we know in Maryland there's a ton more Democrats than Republicans. And we also know that if we turn out our base, that we will win this election. We're a blue state, we're proud of it. But hope is not a strategy. We cannot sit back and do nothing and just expect that our voters will turn out. And so my challenge, the challenge of our campaign and work with all of you is that what can we do differently and what do we need for Prince George's County? Next slide. But well, really, it's all about the margin here in Prince George's. You know, I'm not worried about us winning the Lieutenant Governor's home county. For me, it's how many voters can I get on election day from Prince George's as we try, try to make up for this all across the state. And really, we hit, we hit one more time. The number that I'm looking at is 150,000 votes. Again, 150,000 votes more I want to get here in Prince George's County for Anthony Brown and Ken Elvin than for Larry Hogan. That will allow us to make up for the margins in Western Maryland, you know, on the Eastern Shore, in places that will not vote for us in the same numbers as they did for Martin O'Malley. You know, we will have to we have ground to make up in some of these more rural, more conservative jurisdictions, and we need Prince George's County to give us this margin. If our margin is very similar to how it was in 2002, let's say it's only 100,000 votes, our math becomes incredibly difficult. And that's the burden we have here in Prince George's County. Excellent. So our goals, and now you know, we all know what our goals are, it's turnout. Turn out Democrats, turn out our supporters. It's vote by mail. Democrats have improved our vote by mail performance by 20 points since 2006. And last, and perhaps even most important, is early voting. 
We're one of the few states that have expanded early voting, unlike Republican governors all across this country that's restricted early voting. And what we have found is that who uses early voting? It's Democrats, number one. It's women, number two. It's minorities, number three. And youth, young voters, number four. These are all essentially parts of the coalition that we need to win. In the primary here in Prince George's County, one out of every four voters voted early. One out of every four, a six percentage increase from two years ago. We think in this race, over that seven day early voting period, we can net 20% of our expected voters. And any of you who have done GOTV knows that we get all those votes in the bank, we can make our outreach during those four days before the election that was more effective. Next slide. And so I'm here to say that I need your help. This race is, you know, the fundamentals are tough nationally. We're facing some headwinds locally. But we know exactly what we need to do to win. The first thing is field, something that we're working on with you every single day. Our office on Lake Arbor Road, just about 15 minutes away from here, is open every single day for almost 12 hours a day, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Every day we're trying to contact more and more voters, knock on more and more doors. That's essentially what I need, number one, to recruit you to come out and do a volunteer shift for me. The second thing that we've always worked together on is poll coverage. On election day, when people don't know who they may, what may want to vote for, they trust you. You're a validator um, and someone who's respected in the community and work with you to make sure as many of our poll sites are covered on election day. The third part is in your specific districts and your communities, going on and talking about this election. Talk about how scary Larry Hogan will be. The person who appointed a, an ice dancer in charge of the Ports Administration, the person who had labor leaders tailed by Maryland State Police, the person who doesn't believe in pre-K. You know, talk about what this man stands for, why this race is really a choice, and not just a referendum on Martin O'Malley and Anthony Brown. And last but not least, visibility. All of you want, you know, put a yard sign in, in your yard. If you want us to put a four-way in your community, you want to assign with, with us when you're at the metros. We need us to again ramp up the intensity, ramp up the enthusiasm among our base. And then last but definitely not least, be a surrogate for us. For some reason, Republicans are just so much more, uh, I would say, less bashful about their political views online. They write these long posts on Facebook, and retweet the same people over on Twitter. We need Democrats and our supporters to do the same exact thing. We have a positive visit positive vision to sell. We have a great candidate who has a great biography, and we need more people to know about this. Um, and frankly, we need to help the campaign. The campaign simply cannot do it by itself. Um, and with that, I want to turn it over to one of your own members, um, Teresa, to, to give you a, a charge. I need some deputies. Can I get some deputies? I got one. I got one deputy right there. I'll be a deputy. I need another deputy. Yeah. Another deputy. Come up here in the front here. I need another deputy. I need some deputies now. I need some deputies. Where are my deputies at? Here we go. Here we go. Roz, come up here. You're a deputy. I need some more deputies. Come on, sir. I need a deputy. Come on. I, you're a deputy. Come on up here. You're going to be my deputy. My name is Deputy Dudley. My name is Deputy Dudley, and I need some more deputies. And I know I'm going to get some in a minute. Mr. Dagger, De come on. I need you. Come on, I need a deputy. Come on, I need some deputies now. Just believe, we need deputies. Mr. Moore, come on, I need you. I need you to be a deputy. Come on. Come on, I need, I need you to be a deputy. Democratic Central Committee has on right now. On Saturday morning, I met with Anthony Brown and leaders, political leaders from across the county, and we saw this PowerPoint presentation in more detail. The issue is astounding for us, and there's no clearer picture than what we need to do. The Republicans have done one heck of a job across the state, in Western Maryland, Northern Baltimore County, Howard County, Southern Maryland, Eastern Shore, 
in selling everyone out there that the Democrats have done nothing for the past eight years but raise taxes. Well, I'm sorry, those taxes are the price that we pay for living in a civilized and progressive state, which is Maryland, and I don't know if I even want to live anywhere else, contrary to what they're saying on the news. Because we're investing in our children, we're investing in our schools, we're invest investing in the infrastructure, the purple line, we are investing. And on Saturday, and we had everybody raise their hand. I called him Anthony because he sat behind me in church. I said, Anthony, he had everybody raise their hands. And he said, I put raise your hand. Because he said, I can do this. He made me a deputy. So I'm deputizing you. Okay? Are you prepared? Yes. Are you prepared to go out and spread the word about the brown only ticket? Yes. Are you prepared to tell people about Mr. Hogan? Yes. About his daddy who would not even meet with teachers when he was a county executive. Yes. Are you prepared to go out and distribute literature? Yes. Are you prepared to phone bank any night that you're free, either here at PGCEA on Thursdays yes. or at the Brown headquarters on your nights? Yes. You are now officially deputized. <laughs> George's County over the campaign office, I have a sheet here of what nights your legislative district is um, doing phone banking. Tonight is the 22nd of September, but the 23rd is tonight, the 24th is tomorrow. Each night this week you can go, any night. Thursdays is here, any night you can go to the campaign office, see me. Tell, as Joanne Benson says, tell Lottie, Dottie, and everybody, this is really an important election. Thank you. Ladies, gentlemen, since about 1991, Commission 
when the money went to another county before it came to Prince George's County in a bill that was supposed to help the poor, I, I think I nearly set myself on fire. So it's time to get excited, get out, let's turn the votes out, and, and let's get this thing done and win this election. Uh, do I have uh, Laura Shelton in the house? Yes, come on up, take the side mic. This is our Prince George's County Teacher of the Year. inviting me to speak this evening. Um, real quickly, be, you know, since we're still talking about the election, I know the Lieutenant Governor has visited my church several times when it wasn't an election year, and he stayed the entire service, and he spoke very passionately about things that are not only important to the state, but I guess also to him. I know he specifically spoke about um, adoption and foster care um, in the state of Maryland, advocating for that. And I know for me, my mom was a foster child. The only family I know on her side is my foster family, my foster grandparents. Those are the only grandparents I knew. And so certainly these are issues that we do want to embrace and, uh, you know, just kind of, again, step out there and be advocates for and, and more supportive of, as he has certainly put these platforms, made them his platform and issues um, that should be important to all of us. Uh, again, thank you for having me this evening. I remember not being a building rep, but being in, on an FAC committee some years ago when I was at the UK, so just some years ago. And so it's been about eight or nine years that that's been. And you know, I, I just want you all to know that the work of this body does effect change. It does. I know that at the time that I was involved, we had some serious challenges with staffing. We were very, very, very short staffed, and I recall being pulled every other day, I do mean literally, not once a month, I mean every other day during my planning to cover somebody else's class. And you know, this was before compensation. And so that was beyond challenging. And I wanna say it was maybe the next year that they uh, put in place uh, the, that thing that would, you know, whatever policy it is that would afford us compensation for covering somebody else's class for 60 minutes or so. So please know that the work of this body does affect change. And we want to say thank you, thank you, and thank you for all, to all of you for all that you do on behalf of us. And just to be encouraged to continue the good works and just not become discouraged when, you know, that step increase doesn't come a little quicker than what we thought it should have come. And, you know, just all the other obstacles that do come out. So um, again, just thank you to the board for having me. And that's my two minutes, right? Yes, sir. That was my two minutes. Thank you. I am Tawana Arlene, your board of directors. And it is my privilege to introduce to you one of our own. When we go out to knock on doors for Anthony Brown, if you are a Charles County resident, raise your hand. Okay, well, you know people that are Charles County residents in the county. We have one of our own who is also a teacher-friendly candidate from Green Valley High Elementary School. Okay. Green Valley Academy, Amanda Stewart. Mrs. Amanda Stewart is running for Charles County Commissioner. Can we give her a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Tawana. Thank you, Board of Directors, for allowing me to have a moment of your time just to share some information. Yes, my name is Amanda Stewart. Yes, I'm running for County Commissioner in Charles County, Maryland. Yes, I am the Democratic nominee winner in the primary. I'm so excited about that. Yes, we are Democratic strong, so I will win in November. And so I'm here just to remind you of a couple things. Number one, my website is electamandastewart.com. Please, please go to my website. Share my website with all your family, friends, and neighbors that live in Charles County, electamandastewart.com. Um, I became a PGCEA member back in 1999 when I first started working here in the county, so I've been around for a while. Um, I'm excited about it. Please remember, November 4th is the date. I'm going to vote early voting, so early voting starts October 23rd. From Thursday to Thursday, it's even open Saturdays and Sundays. 
please tell your neighbors and friends to get out and vote, especially in Charles County. Vote for Amanda Stewart, County Commissioner, District 3. Now, I don't know about you, but I know who my next governor is going to be, and it's going to be Anthony Brown. And so I'm so excited to be able to work on the local level with him. So I will be voting October 23rd, that, that Thursday. I will be voting for my next governor, Anthony Brown. And please, again, if you live in Charles County, please vote for Amanda Stewart, County Commissioner. Thank you. Um, I live in Ward 6, which is Capitol Hill and the new stadium down in the waterfront. Um, um, let me tell you, politics really is local. Um, I looked at the list of candidates and saw there was none, and said, well, you know, why not me? So um, I, I uh, went around uh, getting my petition signed. And many people, my slogan is put a teacher on the school board. Um, and people were generally very, you know, like, wow, you know, you're really a teacher. And, you know, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'll tell you a little bit about the race. Um, um, it is very, very local, but of course, politics, politics is local, and your biggest influence is in local elections. Um, so, um, um, I have one opponent. It's a nonpartisan election, but my opponent is uh, a very nice man, but he is uh, he's a Republican. Believe it or not, in D.C., yes, we have them. Um, and um, so, there, there really is a difference between him and me, and um, 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 my website is, awesome. thank you so many of you for picking up, I put more out there, it's like, wow, it's like, I have my little brochure here, uh, this is just for you, uh, about what you can do to help me, again, it's very local, so the, a little bit means a lot, and um, um, if you could come out and, and pass out some pamphlets at a metro stop in, in, in my ward uh, one afternoon, that's really would be like fantastic, so. Um, I appreciate um, uh, this time, and, um, and um, my website is uh, on here, Nida for Kids at gmail.com. And um, um, again, a little, a little goes a, f a long way in a local election, and uh, I'm, I would appreciate um, your support in any way. And um, if you have friends who live in the city, um, um, please tell them about me. That not many people even know about this election. So um, uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, you want to give us an MSEA update there? We had a recent MSEA board meeting. So three things I want to let you all know about. The first thing is that uh, at the MSEA board meeting, a big part of it was about the uh, campaign for Brown. And it was stressed how important it was for Prince George's County to show up. So everybody is looking at Prince George's County for this election. And to just reiterate how important it is the phone bank, um, I did some phone banking the other day, and it was amazing when I called the teachers and they were saying how, okay, I'll, I'll vote for them now, since I heard from my union let me know that they endorsed them. Some members just don't know. So any help you can give will help this campaign. The second thing I want to talk to you about is the evaluation regulations. I have a copy of them. There's a four-page document that I can email to you if you're interested. And it's the proposed actions on the regulations. Talks about all the specifics in regards to your evaluation, when, how often, how, um, your, your, your evaluation, your observation. It's a lot of information that you want to have in your arsenal to just know. So I encourage you to email me. I'll send it to you. And we'll also work on getting up on the PGCA website. My email, you can email me at Mr. Blair Todd at gmail. Again, Mr. Blair Todd at gmail.com. The last thing is an upcoming training that MSCA is putting on, and it's right here at PGCA. It is October 1st, which you can write that on the calendar, 6.30 to 8.30. And it's the Multicultural Coalition, sponsored by MSCA's Minority Affairs Committee and discussion about the impact of poverty on students and in our schools and how to reach and teach them. The deadline to RSVP is the 26th. So that's coming up real soon, 26th of this month, to RSVP. There will be dinner served. I've signed up. I know Tawana Lane has signed up. And so please come out and enjoy this evening. 
Any questions, let me know after the meeting. Thank you. Thank you there. So I'm going to read from High Point High School. They re received the organizing grant that MSDA has. And they're having, their goal is very simple. We're going to organize the organized and bridge the gap between the veteran educators with the brand new educators. This includes tenure, non-tenure, old, middle-aged, career changers, specialists, central office members, and yes, Teach for America, TSA. I ask that you sign up to attend this organizing workshop. There's a sheet here on the clipboard. I'm going to start here. And if you can sign up, there's two days we're looking at. We're looking at either November 8th, which is both a Saturday, or November 15th. It depends on the majority, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the goal of this grant is to start teaching members how to organize. We cannot just rely on our unisurps to do every fight for us. It has to start at the end. So this is to help you with the staff that's going to teach us how to really organize in our building so we can start taking care of the issues for us before they come in. Do you understand? Yeah. So here's the signing sheet. Please sign up. Pass it down the aisle this way, down the aisle that way. You know how we do in class. And I'll come and get it at the end. Thank you. Committee reports. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this doesn't get done by one or two people. Uh, we need people who are coming into the profession to start coming in and making light work with many hands. Uh, we have lists on the back table to sign up for committees, and we would, we would like you to think about finding one that interests you. I, I think that's how most of us got started. My first one was PR. And I went from PR to GR to, I'm trying to I can't remember all the committees I've been on at one point or another. So it, it's how you get involved. Uh, it's where you start working within the association and, and getting our message out because we've got a lot of people doing it. Uh, do you have a budget? No budget. Report. God bless you. Ne next month will be a big one. The committee only meets twice. So our first meeting will be next Monday, the 29th of September. If you have any thoughts of policy changes, ways you think we should be doing things better, please put something in writing. If you can attend, please come on Monday. If not, send it to me by email and we will work on it. Uh, cburk at pgcps.org. I think we can use pgcps for this purpose. Uh, that will be the one opportunity to get the language into us to consider. Our second meeting will be to revise, look at the entire package before we present it to the board of directors and then to you. So again, if you have ideas to change the bylaws or our practices, which are in a handbook, uh, let us know. We, you know. I'm not going to be judgmental. I will just craft it so it's worded correctly and present it on get the bylaws so that you really know the association well and what that, that's the guiding principle document nothing can trump the bylaw and so everything has to be in, a, in accordance with the bylaws and if you were to go through there and you see something and you go why do we do it that way uh, you know we've been making some changes over the last couple of years and there's going to be a couple more that are going to be put before you in october and november i think so uh, government relations, Emily, did you have to leave? Yeah, yeah but you're, you're going to go, Jamal? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a few of you today have signed up to the phone bank. Um, no one signed up to Canvas yet, but how many people actually did some type of election work during the primary in June? Whether it was phone banking, working at a polling location, Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. But we need your help now in the general election. I know you saw the PowerPoint slide. So we have flipboards. We have sign-up sheets in the back. We're here every Tuesdays and Thursdays from 4 to 7 p.m. Um, we'll take in our, our orders if you have them, specialties. I know we're getting hummus and olives next week for GR. But if you have anything else, we would love to have you out. And on Saturdays, we're definitely canvassing for our only campaign and our school board candidates, Peggy Higgins and Amber Waller, definitely need our help. So please come and sign up. Uh, Jamal. Good afternoon. Once again, it's all been said. We have 30, I'm sorry, we have 6,300 uh, PPCA, MSCA members in Prince George's County. Okay? We need to get every last one of them to vote. In order to do that, we have to call them. We have to reach out to them. 
we have to make sure that they get out to the polls. So, we need everyone to sign up. Also, we have a day of action that's going to happen on October 4th. Is that correct? October 4th. All of the unions in Prince George's County, all of the unions, are going to be at the Brown Brown Alderman campaign office. We need to have a strong showing there. So October 4th, there's a sign-up sheet here. They're going to be there for what? 10 to 4. But you can do two-hour shifts, okay? But we want to have a strong showing from our union as well, so that they know that we have their back as well. Because as um, Lieutenant Governor Brown said, we will be at the table at the beginning of the day, the end, in the middle of the day, and the end of the day. So we need to support him. We'll be in the back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I have something the committee met to discuss the sample ballot that they're going to produce that's going to go out countywide? And there was an effort to endorse one of the school couple endorse school board candidates. Those school board races are nonpartisan. And so that conversation ended with um, a vote being taken so that um, the Democratic Central Committee did not take a position on either one. And that could have hurt Peggy and Amber Waller, who are our endorsed candidates, because the recommendation was not to endorse either one of those. Why is this important? Because those are our endorsed candidates. It's also important that tomorrow night, if you are available, the Democratic Central Committee is meeting again um, to discuss the referendum questions, uh, including the expansion of term limits to a three-year term and other important pieces of legislation that they're going to put on the sample ballot. I would ask that anybody who's available tomorrow night at 7 o'clock can come to the Seal, Seal Workers Union right there on Silver Hill Road, if you can, and help us to support it because we do not want them to vote on it again to try to get those um, that overturned. Thank you. Okay. We have a new membership committee, All Energized. Yay. Several things planned for you. The first thing we have planned for you is a faculty advisory council workshop. It will be held right here at 4.30 on October 23rd here at PGCA, part one. We will have part two of the FSC workshop on November 13th, right here at PGCA. Please come out and support us. New Teacher Mixer Social will be held on November 14th. We will ensure that these things happen. So I'm depending on you, the reps, to pass the word out in addition to the flyers that we will be sending out and the email we will be sending out to all new teachers. A mini peek for those teachers who we missed at the county orientation in August. We want to catch those. And for those of you who eat too much during Christmas, we will have Zumba and line dancing in January. So stay tuned for your calendars. We will be sending you information on those activities. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing all of you. Thank you, future teachers. She sent them, they're on the calendar, just e emailing them. Which day of the month is it? Is it? You... Oh, oh, read it next. Yeah. It's the second Tuesday. Of second Tuesday. The second Tuesday of each month. The second Tuesday of each month. Okay. It's membership second meeting Tuesday. at 4.30. Thank you. Hi. Future teachers. It, does it bother you if I pronounce your name Jean-Bierre? It's wonderful after my ballet teacher. Okay. So it's the old French teacher, I can remember. Okay. All right, I'm here today to try to listen to some members that come on and help me out with this committee, because I am new and I do want to make sure that Fouan doesn't find where I live. <laughs> the next meeting will be with membership on October 7th at 4.30. The mission is for us to get student members involved with PGCA process and to make sure that they stay here and work with us in PG County. So come on and help me. Prince George. Prince George. George. Prince George. No, it's Prince George. Thank you. Co-chair, Elementary. Um, 
Going back to where's Ali? Just so I and Ali, yes, I was about. Um, we're also making the appeal. We're on the bandwagon too, appealing to you to become a part of our membership, our committee. Our committee is one of the most vibrant committee in the PGCPA. And I, at this time, I'd like to introduce to you our members. My other co-chair is Olive Lennox. Where is Olive? Please stand and show your face. Um, the Lazarus Mr. there. There she is. Where's the, where's the and Lucille, where's Lucille? Come on, Lucille. And let me let you into a little secret with Lucille. Lucille has, what, six days to retirement. <laughs> Committees. 
because we're planning to have our committees be more active this year. So please come and sign up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, NECC, do you have a report? Uh, yes. the president, the vice president, and four at-large members for the board. All nominations must be submitted online, and the deadline is October 31st at 11.59 p.m. Remember, and also for the MSCA and NEA delegate positions, remember that campaigning cannot begin until after the slate is announced at the January Rep Council meeting. Uh, literature may not be passed out at any Rep Council meeting or literature may be passed out at any rep council meeting following the announcement of the slate nominees. And a candidate may not campaign during the professional workday as defined in the negotiated agreement. This would include the use of telephone, email, and other electronic devices. And please do not forget to um, fill out your faculty rep and member list form if you have not already done so and either faxed it in or turned it in this evening. Thank you. Thank you. I, just, I still remember the first time I walked into the NEA convention, 10,000 people going crazy. Uh, it's, it's a good memory to have and it, it shows the work that we do together when you see 10,000 people actually work together and get work done. Uh, PDL. No, there's not necessarily an official report this evening. We'll be holding our first meeting this Saturday, and from there you'll probably receive announcements about trainings and other activities coming out in your email. So please watch your email as well so as the website. The uh, same goes for Read Across America, because uh, we are united for the committee. All and we're right? shooting for a follow-up with Bridget. Yes, in October. I'm sorting that date out with her. In October? Yes. Uh, read Across America, new chair Jane Hersler. She's hiding. <laughs> you, you want you want to do it in October? Uh, okay, we'll work. It's okay. That shortens the meeting. I'm happy. Uh, read Across America, public relations. Janice Jefferson, William Hay. Please tell us when your meetings are. That kind of thing. That is way. No idea. Okay, I'm, I'm putting out the charges sometime this week, so Janice, you're not here? Not here, okay. Uh, sick leave bank, Greg Beard, do you have a report? <laughs> That's why I'm on the sick leave bank. <laughs> City Bank uh, met uh, last Monday, and we handled about uh, uh, 20 petitions. There was one appeal, and uh, we plan on meeting uh, this upcoming Monday again to see if there's some other applications. Okay. Uh, Social Committee, Linda and or Marguerite. All PGCE all the time. Really. So, first, I would like to introduce um, Kimberly Cosby. She is our liaison to the um, social committee because she is our new user. Um, we meet the third Wednesday of every month at 4 30, right here in this hall or in this building. Repeat that, which is Thursday? The third Wednesday, third Wednesday of every month. So if you would like to join us, we are always looking for new members to come and explore with us. Um, the, our first event will be October the 24th from 4.30 to 8. We are going to have our first annual fall festival. We are going to have games, a dance off. We're going to have a costume contest and just have a wonderful fun time. So please put that on your calendar and come out and join us. Um, December the 5th is the date for our holiday event. So please mark your calendars now. Don't 
book anything else for that evening. Plan to be here with us on December the 5th. Um, we are also working on having an educator's night at an upcoming Wizards game, so be listening out for that information. And then also stay tuned for information on um, a silent auction sponsored by um, Ms. Teresa Dudley for some wizard tickets to help us to uh, raise funds for our PGCEA Foundation. And I think that's it. Okay. The sooner the better, get your proposals together. Uh, specific proposals of what's gonna cost how much and you need to schedule time with us with the board of directors to present your proposal to the board of directors for us to release the money from the common fund that we use to fund committees and there's a, there's a finite amount of dollars in that fund uh, certain things that we do try to set aside because the social committee has a couple of big items uh, but there's a set amount of money in that committee fund so we need you to try and keep your budgets under control when you come in with the request. But the sooner you get that done, the sooner we're able to release the funds and let you do the committee work that we so value, okay? But that needs to happen soon. All right, we're second Wednesday of the month, so it'd be nice if, if a couple of committees could come in in October and a couple more in November and make their request for the year for how they want to distribute some funds, okay? Uh, Donna Hayes, are you in the room? She's at NECC. Do you have a report for the fund for children? She's out. She's on NECC. Is she out there? Trying to hear what day is. She's, she's fine. We'll be talking to you about that before the convention. Uh, convention years, our date is October 6th for the pre convention caucus one week earlier because I'll be at the National Council on Teacher Retirement. Uh, it's, it's a long four days. It's, it's a long four days. I get to hear about cost averaging and not things. It's, it's doable, but it's, it's a long four days. Uh, they treat us right, but it's, I'd rather be here. Uh, yes. Yes. Dr. Joseph Webb, Board of Directors, President Haynes, when I was treasurer, every year I had to return approximately 30 or 40 unissued checks for the MSEA convention. I would just like to know, the people who are designated as delegates, have they given affirmative responses that they will be there? I, I, Adrian's not here, I couldn't answer you. If you drop me a line on email, I can answer you. Okay, that, but maybe some sense because I know we had so approximately 30 people who did not make the top 126. We, we don't have, we've gone through the list, I think, of all the alternate delegates, uh, and we're down to nobody else that's had the votes cast for them. So, I, but we've had some people cancel out. Okay, very good. Thank you. That's why I say get people to run, because every year we're scrambling, and by, my, by MSEA and NEA rules, I cannot send you if the body did not vote for you. You have to have had some votes cast for you. So if people cancel at the last minute, and I have nobody that's got votes cast for them, I can't replace someone with someone who's had no votes cast for them. As long as you've had, you, you, if you vote for yourself, and we get to you, you're, you can be a delegate, okay? And you laugh at its rules. And, and, and I hope you guys understand that I follow the rules, conspicuously follow the rules to the best of my ability at all times. And the rule is that delegates have to be elected by the body. And if it's one vote, I'm happy. It's one vote. If we get to the person with one vote becoming a delegate, so be it. But if you didn't run and you had no votes, you can't come to me and ask to go to the convention. You didn't have any votes. Okay? So ask people to run. We have no old business. We have no new business. Treasurer, do you have a report? No, we have no treasurer's report. Show me money. Oh, yes.
Who's got the clipboard? Okay, we got a clipboard going around, signing up. All right, President's Report. I'm going to be brief. Uh, we have, I'm not going to read the report that I wrote to you about print services, okay? Uh, that has been most of September. <laughs> Uh, it's going to get better, okay? It's not going to be the answer that everybody wanted, but it's going to get better over the, over the next couple months as they, there are some schools that still haven't installed the printers. There are some glitches in the program. Uh, there are some things that didn't go exactly as planned. There are some schools that didn't open the boxes. Uh, there, there are some situations around uh, but within, I'm hoping, a month, they're going to hand you a little smart card that when you walk up to the machine, you pass it over a sensor on the machine and your job runs. Uh, and that's, that's going to take off, take off some of the time of the data entry and you know, you know, I'm sitting here trying to get my name out and EIN over there. Uh, so that's going to be gone as, a, as an issue. Uh, you do have a job to do. Executive level at, at Sasser has assured us that they want the FAC to be a part of this process. Uh, they did notice the team that they're sending out to go into the buildings where the, the complaints are coming from. Uh, they have noticed things like two of the photocopiers in one office. Uh, all the printers in one way, that, that kind of thing, where there have been mistakes made in the way the, the machines were, were distributed in the building. And so they're trying to get that corrected uh, as best they can, but the FAC is part of that process because the principals do have leeway in how the machines are distributed in the building, okay? They're supposed to be arranging this in a way that maximizes access by all members. And so you have a role to play as FACs. Now, my problem, my problem at this point is one month in, I've had six FAC reports, half a dozen, that mention printers, okay? That does not tell the president that this isn't a problem everywhere, okay? If it is as, as much noise as we had in August, I need, to, I need to have reports from FACs that say, this is what we propose to the principal, this is what the principal replied, okay? I, I need the FAC to go through the process. That is the first step in settling problems in complaints, okay? That's step one. And so before we can take it to step two, we have to have nice evidence that step one's not getting the, the problem solved, okay? So FACs have, a, have, a, have issues to work through with their principals to make recommendations about how, where they go and how, how, how they're spaced. And then we have to let management get a chance to, to fix the issue or we, we take it to the second step when, we, when the issues aren't resolved in the building level, okay? So that's where the, the printers stand at this point. Uh, I've been hearing this one a lot on email, so Grading days are telework days through the end of this negotiated agreement, which is June 30th of next year. We're on a 192 school day here. We don't get the extra day in February. That, that wasn't in this year. Um, but the grading days are telework days for the duration of this negotiated agreement through June 30th, period. Everybody got that? Okay. Um, Last one for me, I get a question a lot, a form of a question, and I, I need this form of question to stop coming through my desk, okay? We have to find other ways to phrase it. Can my principal require me to do X, okay? And what follows the to do can be many things. Can my principal require me to, okay? If it starts with, can the principal require me to? Okay, I just want to be clear so everybody's on, we're all on the same page. For seven and a half hours a day, the principal can require you to do just about anything that's not illegal, immoral, or unethical. Okay, 
if it's at, if it's job related during the school day the principal can say do this and you don't have the right to say no okay we are in a compliance state you comply with directives and if you feel that it's an unreasonable directive that's the FAC okay you bring it up with your FAC if you feel that you have unfairly been singled out that's an FAC issue okay it can't always be you that covers the uncovered class you can't be the principal's pet okay? and always be the one that's asked to cover okay that that that's a duty that needs to be shared equally amongst the staff so if it's an equity issue you can bring it to the FAC if it's if it's if you find that it's questionable in terms of the negotiated agreement you bring it to the FAC okay but you comply with directives because the moment you say no uh, there's not much left that we can do for you okay that's insubordination and so I, I, I answer members when they ask me that question when you phrase the question, can my principal direct me to, you're looking for me to tell you that you don't have to do it. And, I, and the president can't tell you that you have a right to say no, because you don't in Maryland, okay? And so you have venues, you have to comply with directives, okay? You have to comply with directives, and then if you feel that it's unfair, or, or somehow in violation of the negotiated agreement, you go to your building rep and you say, you know, he's asking me every other day to cover a class. You can, you can work that through the FAC and solve that problem at the building level, okay? That's an issue that can be solved locally. And if there's a refusal to, to do, deal with that problem, we now have an issue, okay? And, and that will get, get us involved. So I, I, I wanted to get that out there, get everybody on the same page and understand that they, don't ask me that question anymore. Can the principal direct me to? Because the answer is, yes, he can. Okay, he's the boss, okay? All right, I only have a few FAC reports this month. You see them here. I need FAC reports, yes. Uh, in September? Let's see, I'll take a look. That's too much. 